Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Dog Walker is one of the most influential people on the internet. You can call him cringe, you can call him stupid, or you can call him a tryhard. But one cannot deny the impact he's had on the internet scene. What James and his character The Angry Video Game Nerd did for video games, Doug Walker and his character The Nostalgia Critic did for movies. Both had very similar styles and both even crossed over a few times, but they were both unique in their own way. The way Doug would analyze movies in a comedic way while also giving genuine critique is what captivated a lot of people. He didn't spout foul obscenities or stuff about Buffalo's buttholes or anything, but he was a lot more over the top. And, well, he started playing into that a bit too much. You see, there, there are two types of Nostalgia Critic videos. Pre to Boldly Flea and post to Boldly Flea. To Boldly Flea was Doug's three and a half hour long movie that gave him this idea that people loved his skits so much he tried to cancel the Nostalgia Critic for a skit show and then cancel the skit show after poor reception and brought the Nostalgia Critic back with way more skits. The post To Boldly Flea episodes just can't hold a candle to his old reviews despite the increase in budget. I will fight anyone about this. I believe Doug's older videos are still entertaining to watch. I can go back and watch any of these, and yeah, there are some cringe moments here and there, but overall, they're still good watches to this day. They are a part of why Doug was so influential because of their quality. Well, a, a little too influential. Just like the angry video game nerd, Doug's popularity would spawn his very own sect of copycats. People who would do the exact same thing he did, usually lesser. Where James spawned a bunch of foulmouth tryhards, Doug spawned a bunch of know all critics who competed to see whose voices could hit the highest frequencies. These nostalgia critic wannabes deserve their own dedicated video. Well, the most interesting ones anyway. You wanna see some grown man criticize media that's older than you are? I am happy to oblige. Welcome to... I'll be the one to watch the guy in the flow I'm the type of gamer every gamer every gamer should know now, just because Doug was a movie critic, does not mean every single person in this video is going to be a movie critic. It's generally the style of humor and the usual format that would make these individuals nostalgia critic clones. This includes stuff like incredibly long and obnoxious skits, going into living cartoon territory rants, stuff like that. It's a little hard to explain, but trust me, you'll know it when you see it. That's two minutes. Two minutes, and already I want to stab a puppy and eat people. Pray for the apocalypse, people! We have 80 more minutes of this shit! Now, who is our first subject for today? Well, my friends, allow me to introduce you to the Gamers Atlas. This is Lotsa. Lotsa is a huge, huge fan of the Nostalgia Critic and he was very outspoken about this. He expressed this in his series, The Gamer's Atlas, where he would review board games in, uh, 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 oh my god, you, you cannot be serious with this outfit. Already, there's problems just looking at this guy. With James and Doug, yeah, they wore outfits, but these are like typical wear. James is dressed like an office worker, while Doug dressed like someone who acts like a professional. You know, people actually do wear stuff like this in places. Nobody dresses like this today unless you're seriously into role-playing. It's all just distracting. When watching your videos, I should be focused on what you're saying, not being distracted by your costume and asking to myself, what do you think that wig smells like? And role-playing, Lotsa is indeed into, because he plays not only this, but multiple characters in each video. Arr, your ship lies with Davy Jones! Arr, 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 arr. Victory goes to the true pirate! Arr, 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 arr. He'll switch in and out of costume and talk to himself, but later on he got an actual cast to be in his videos. And yeah, I'll give him this. He's got the skits down to a T. This is as nostalgia critic as you can get skit-wise. Ever wanted to see a pizza delivery man who flies with laser nipples? 
He's got it. All right, pizza is here. Where's the cheese sticks? <sighs> really, I think this was just an excuse to flex his editing and special effects skills because I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty good. Are they impressive? Yes. Are they funny or entertaining? Not in the slightest. But I sure hope you enjoyed these skits because, well, that's all these videos really have to offer. The actual review of the board games are usually very short and very uneventful. He usually explains the rules and gives his opinion on it, maybe with a quip or joke, and then review over. Time for a skit. Overall, his show is nothing special in the slightest. But I guess if you enjoyed Nostalgia Critic skits back then, this nails them down to the smallest detail. Lotsa was clearly a huge, huge fan of Doug and his work, but he just couldn't reach the same level. And he tried. Oh, he tried. He applied for that guy with the glasses to get accepted by Doug on his own website, even with his own theme song and everything. I'll be the toast of the town, the guy on the go. I'm the type of gamer every gamer, every gamer should know. I'll be the one to watch the guy in the flow. I'm the type of gamer every gamer, every gamer should know. Becoming as popular as popular can be. Making my mark, making my mark in high society. I'm the bow of the ball, the star. Well, this is a. This is something, isn't it? I actually thought it was impressive at first he wrote this whole song and composed it. And then I found out it's taken forbidden from My Little Pony. I'll be the toast of the town, the girl on the go. I'm the type of gamer every gamer, every gamer should know. I'll be the one to watch the girl in the flow. I'm the type of gamer every gamer, every gamer should know. How silly of me to expect originality from Lotsa. It wasn't just this, though. Lotsa tried everything to get noticed by Doug and that guy with the glasses. He met Doug at a convention in 2013 and got him and Malcolm to sign on to do a project with him. A movie. My Date with a Secret Agent. A romantic comedy musical Lotsa was producing and writing. Clearly a passion project for Lotsa. He wanted this film to have everything. He even tried getting John Delancey, very obviously from his role in Friendship is Magic. Yeah, Lotsa was a huge brony. He fit all the chip marks from back in the day. A nostalgia critic fan, a brony. Next you'll tell me he browsed Reddit. You can watch the Indiegogo video to see all the crap Lotsa had planned. He even had a hook for the entire video. The main character is Tom. He's a lovable geek. He invents things at Vidor, but his love life is bleak. He crushes on Laura, the top field agent there, but he's afraid she won't like him, so he stays out of her hair. When Vilar's destroyed and leaves only them alive, Tom and Laura must team up if the world is to survive. Oh crap, are we having a rap battle? You can be here, you can be there, anywhere you can go, any place you wanna go, don't you know? You're just an image of yourself floating in the air, can't lift a thing, and you can't even comb your hair. And for all this, Lots of wanted seven hundred thousand dollars. Are you out of your fucking mind? For reference, James Roth wanted seventy-five thousand dollars to make the AVGN movie, but ended up getting three twenty-five hundred thousand dollars instead. And AVGN was a household name at this point. Lotsa wanted more than double that as the minimum, and really had nothing to show for it. And unsurprisingly. The movie didn't reach its goal. It didn't even come close. So Lotsa, yet again, didn't get the acknowledgement of his idol like he wanted. Some people started taking notice of Lotsa's attempts to get the attention of Doug. Most notably, the people over on 4chan and from the TV board. They learned of all of Lotsa's attempts to get Senpai to notice him. And also found out he's a big fan of Red Letter Media as well. They thought, well, since all the attempts of working with Doug failed, why don't we try to get Lotsa to gravitate towards them instead? You know, send him on the right path. Someone on the TV board sent Lotsa a letter pretending to be Mike from Red Letter Media and successfully convinced Lotsa to create an audition tape. Hi Mike, this is Paul. This is my audition for Red Letter Media. And to drive from Chicago to Milwaukee and meet up at a diner, only to discover nobody from Red Letter Media was there. Lotsa found out the entire thing was a setup, and drove back to Chicago. Later, Rich Evans would confirm the story himself on stream. A while back, where 4chan tricks some poor schmuck 
into coming out here. Uh, 4chan posed as us, said we were, we were looking for, for on-air talent, and got some schmuck to try and find our studio for an audition. This is the, the cruelest fucking thing you could have done. That is a cruel joke. That's three times now Lotsa has had his dreams crushed. After this, Lotsa basically stopped trying to be an e-celeb. He mentioned what his dream is to actually do in his Red Letter Media audition tape. In July, I intend to move to LA with a friend of mine and we're gonna break into the industry. And believe it or not, he actually did just that. Lotsa actually got into the industry as an editor on a couple of projects, some of which were from Disney. Lotsa actually got to work at Disney. He made it further than most. After getting ignored and trolled, he went on and actually got a job worth something. He went from doing mediocre board game reviews to actually working in the industry. Lotsa is the tale of someone who completely failed in getting recognized by the people he looked up to, but used what he had to go and actually do something else of worth. His reviews are absolutely forgettable. What, 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 what do I mean they're forgettable? They're already forgotten. Nobody watched them. But he at least used the knowledge he had when making them for something else. Lotsa showed us all. Never stop following your dreams. And please do background checks before making road trips to different states. You came to the right place where everyone will know. This is gonna blow your mind. This is the King Audio Show! <laughs> One of the biggest differences between the impact James and Doug had on the online space relies on the longevity of all the people popping up influenced by them. With James, the Angry Game Critic was a, a, a product of its time. So many Angry Gamers popped up and died out because that was seen as the ticket to gain a following. Only a small handful of Angry Game reviewers survived getting filtered by the passage of time. In Doug's case, it's quite a bit different. His style of humor is much more broad and reached way more people. And because of this, there are people heavily inspired by Doug that still pop up to this very day. The nostalgia critic wannabes are still coming with no signs of stopping. So that's why I went and I asked all of you for suggestions on who to include in this video, since there were so many to choose from. I really wanted an equivalent to the angry pissed off gamer from my AVGN clones video, a clone that tries and fails so hard it ends up being amazing. And one name I constantly saw was a channel called Dogs Eating Dog 6, so I decided to check it out. Okay, the guy seems to be heavily into Mario RPGs, not seeing the Nostalgia Critic clone connection, but we'll check out one of his videos. Why Modern Family Guy is a cartoon disgrace. Let's watch this one. Eve. Seen a lot of Hotel Mario memes, even though the game itself is still horrible as it seems. But where are those creative, well-made mashups, which all of us can rely? Lucky there's a mashup guy. He's been making covers. He's a Rosalina lover. Stop! Stop! So stop! Stop the video. What? What? What in God's name have you people sent me to? What have you gotten me to watch? So, yes, this guy is, he's, he's very angry, and he uses the Mario RPG characters as avatars. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's his shtick. A lot of YouTubers have shticks. I use a character from a 25-year-old Donkey Kong cartoon as an avatar. You, you know, I, I make sneak jokes and all that shit. But this, this is overwhelming. Ugly face ever again, because if he does... <laughs> What the fuck is he even saying? And yes, all of his videos are like this. Getting irrationally angry at some cartoon characters with Mario RPG characters as avatars. I've seen some pathetic knockoffs of the well-known Koopa King, but this takes the cake! Did... did he just call K. Roll a Bowser knockoff? Carol, what do you think about this? He screams and yells almost every sentence about the smallest and most pointless things. Lois trips on her chest and grabs her boob. Lame! <laughs> one, one, one of these days, I will get a girlfriend and just scream that out of nowhere and see what happens. So here's the thing. Everyone knows that Doug Walker is like, he, he's like an exaggerated cartoon character. He likes to ham it up and go loony toony because, well, it, it's a part of his character. People meme on it and make clips and compilations of him losing it for ironic purposes. Like his bat credit card clip. This is one of his most popular outbursts. A bat 
credit card. They gave him a bat credit card? They had the balls to give one of the greatest superheroes of all time a bat credit card? No! No! Does not compute! Does not compute! Does not compute! It's inside! I apologize for that outrage. It was childish and immature. I just get a little peeved when I see one of my childhood icons carrying a bad credit card, you bastards! I'll kill you! I'll kill you, all of you! All of you will die! You'll get the gas! Now, you may have found that funny, may have not. It's entirely up to taste. Let's replay the first part for a second. No! No! Does not compute! Does not compute! Does not compute! Now, Imagine if Doug talked in that screaming over the top voice the whole fucking video. It would get old really fast. The point of this was it was an outburst. He doesn't do it the whole video, and that's why it stands out. A lot of clones don't seem to get that, so they add like an angry cartoon person the full duration of the video. Take this other clone called TV Trash who does the same thing, albeit to a lesser extent. <laughs> This dude doesn't get that if you do it for the entire video, it loses its luster. Dogs Eating Dog 6 here screams at the top of his lungs the entire video in every video. It doesn't matter if it's 20 minutes long or 2 hours long, he screams during all of it. But it's not in a it gets old kind of way, it's in a this man sounds genuinely unwell kind of way. I don't know if he's trying to sound serious or funny, but it's definitely the latter. Why are you this angry over the villain from Turbo? This is without doubt the worst twist villain I've ever seen as he's on the same level as the Paul Blart Molkov twist villain! This doesn't sound like a guy getting mad because something is poorly written or badly executed. The only way someone could be this mad is if these characters killed their father or something. But legit, the way he's taking this so seriously in all of his videos, it, it, it's, it's just... It's so good. Whether it be Family Guy, talking about bad villains, or yelling at kids 10 and under. We'll get to that in a minute, trust me. All of his videos are entertaining because he's so mad at literally nothing. Him projecting through a bunch of Mario characters is just a cherry on top. I'm pretty sure he thinks this is badass in some sort of way, and that's why it's so funny. Even a Mario plushie video and its lore, he draws issue with it and complains about it, and thinks everyone else cares as much as he does. So, clearly, you, this, this guy has some sort of mental disorder. I'm not gonna say it because I think people are sick of hearing it, but I think you can probably guess the one. This man got the ability and skill to put videos together, and this is what he used it for. Gotta admire the hustle. But then again, he goes and uses these video editing skills to yell at a bunch of kids for two hours. Like, legit, he yells at a bunch of kids because of some petty drama nobody knew or cared about. Imagine. Imagine being like 10 years old, making stupid plushy videos for fun, and then this girl man makes a two-hour video essay on you for being horrible villains that are worse than Mr. Freeze from Batman and Robin. The voice acting is just painful! I can't stand listening to them! Some characters have almost the exact same voice as other characters! The videos are formulaic and repetitive, the writing is awful, the pacing is slow, the editing is horrible, and the thumbnails are abysmal! Two hours. Two hours he spends screaming at these literal children that are literal nobodies online for drama nobody but dogs eating dogs six cares about. All over some plush videos. There's just nothing positive I can say about these guys! How can you praise them? How can you side with them and accuse dogs eating dogs six and his friends of cyberbullying? Wait, is, is, is he referring to himself in the third person? Jesus Christ, this, this, this is amazing. Like, I, I am not even joking. This is some of the funniest and most entertaining shit I've seen online in a while. I have not seen anything like this in ages. And it's even funnier that it's coming from Mario characters with demonic voice filters. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty cringy. This grown man is attacking literal kids online. But my God, how, how can I not find him taking this all so seriously funny? Dogs eating dog six is what happens when someone tells a man there's nothing wrong with being an adult and liking Mario, and then he makes it his whole personality. 
and this is the end result. But my god, is the end result a masterpiece of art. Just like the angry pissed off gamer from back in the day, this is why I still use the internet, when stuff like this is still being made. Dogs eating dog 6, my dude, if you're watching this, please, please don't stop making this content, I beg of you, you have something, keep it up. Godspeed, dogs eating dog 6, Godspeed. He's a mash up guy! In the landscape of content creation on the web, literal hundreds, thousands of content creators fight for your attention. When looking at content on the internet, one question always rings in my head. Why should I watch your videos over everybody else? What makes you so special? Well, for most of these people try to be like Doug Walker, next to nothing, really. They're just doing what they thought was funny and copying it and hope it makes them funny and then famous. But if they're doing the same thing Doug is doing, then why don't I just watch Doug? Why do I need to watch your reviews? Some were smart enough to have dug their own little niches, like reviewing Tom's The Tank Engine movies, or reviewing My Little Pony episodes of the Doug Walker style. This is two times too many My Little Ponies come up in this video. But others decided to do the same thing as Doug, but with a gimmick. I'm gonna go over a handful of these because they were too interesting to not give a mention. So yeah, this is a, this is gonna be a little rapid fire of some incredibly weird individuals that took inspiration from Doug and put a twist on it. First up on the table, how about your gimmick being, you're a clone of the Nostalgia Critic. Yeah, this this is the Nostalgia Critic Jr. Unofficial and not connected to Doug in any way. It, it, is, is that legal? Can you do that? So yeah, the whole gimmick here is he's doing the Nostalgia Critic bit, but he's younger, so he's reviewing things from the early 2000s and stuff like that. At least, I think he's trying to view things from the 2000s because his audio mixing is worse than mine. Hey, MNC Jr. I remember reboot it because I need reassurance I'm not the only one, eh? That's right, folks, you heard it correctly. Nostalgia Critic Jr. Did... Did anyone catch a word of that? Okay, so this guy is pretty aware of what he's doing. He just needs to fix his audio mixing. Let's move on. The flag is a fucking leaf! So now, why don't we remove the human element from the Nostalgia Critic? Literally, let's remove the human and replace him with a rabbit. This is the bunny perspective. Hello and welcome again to the bunny perspective. And this is another installment of Time Travel Month. Yeah, this guy uses a bunny puppet to express his opinions. And he reviews stuff like anime and cartoons and well, okay, I'm gonna be completely honest here. I kind of like this thing. Out of all the clones I've seen for this video, this guy is probably the best. He brings his own energy and personality and is actually entertaining without fully copying Doug's shtick. All my friends are dead and they don't like me anymore. They moved along, they changed, and now they find me quite a bore. Way back then it was okay to be a little weird. But all my friends are dead and so mad he didn't grow a beard. It's a shame this dude didn't really take off and kind of abandoned his channel a few years ago. He kind of had something here. I guess Arlo and his lukewarm takes will have to do instead. But that puppet probably cost a lot to make, and so did this rabbit puppet. And you want to know something? We can go cheaper! Today we're going to be looking at another TV-based movie, one that's received a lot of hate from both critics and fans of the original source material. The movie in question is The Last Airbender! Uh, this, uh, this, this man is, uh, this man is talking to a wolf hand puppet. Leaf here can't move like that! And neither can you, but for different reasons. Huh. Touché. Uh, what do I even say about this? Nothing I could say could even make sense of what I'm witnessing right now. I is it funny? No. Is it cringy? No. I'm just baffled. If this guy kept this going, I wouldn't come back. But at the same time, I will probably never forget this as long as I live. Get it? Hot! <laughs> I've picked up a thing or two since watching this movie. Some clones have been mostly lost over the years, and their mere presence can only be found in old commentary videos. Take our friend Sour Apple here, a man who dresses entirely in green and only green, and talks in the most forced accent I've ever heard in my life. Hello, 
Um, it's me, Sour Apple, the host of the View Anything. His whole thing is he will review literally anything and uses the generator to decide what he wants to review. And by generator, I mean he pretends like it's random, but it's not really since the entire video was already scripted, recorded, and planned out. Really, for what little remains of him, his reviews are just kind of lifeless, besides the forced accent. But really, the only person I can blame is myself, because I went out of my way to look at it and include this guy in this video. Oh crap, who else can I include? Uh, oh, um, oh, I already brought him up in the last segment, but Rowdy C, aka TV Trash, his gimmick is, uh, he's, uh, very, very loud, and his voice sounds like a parakeet who hasn't quite grasped the English language yet. Hammer! And then there's this... guy and... girl? Let's see if we can't find something to nitpick about, shall we? This is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Okay, now, I can't really judge this because this dude can't be any older than 20 and is clearly working with what he's got. I've heard a lot of their work in a lot of different cartoons, and I still don't know what they're saying half the time. This does not help. And his whole series is doing this with this anime girl, his friend, sister, significant other, victim? If you're in trouble, blink twice! She doesn't blink. Okay, okay, she's fine. I mean, this is just some guy having fun with editing software and some friend of his. Kind of wholesome in a way. And stop staring at me with them big old eyes! I think you all get the picture by now. Everyone tried everything to get noticed, to be seen as different while doing the same thing Doug was doing at the same time. Some of these are way better than others, but that really comes down to time and resources. I will say, I would rather watch any of these people than the wall review, but I think most people would watch anything other than that. Oscar bait song, smoke a bong, and it will feel less wrong. So long. Oh. Oh. So stop it, stop it, please, I beg you! All these people, they tried. They really did, but none could live up to the standard Doug had. In fact, Doug couldn't live up to the standard Doug had. So I don't think they should be kicking themselves over this. I hope they're all doing well with their lives instead of the bad future where they wasted it doing this. So we've gone through a bunch of Nostalgia Critic clones, and seeing all these people on YouTube clearly influenced by Doug and his work, what could possibly top that? Well, how about a whole website dedicated to ripping off Doug Walker and his old site, That Guy With The Glasses? Let me introduce you all to Reviewtopia. <laughs> Now, what is Reviewtopia, you might ask? Well, to put it very bluntly, it was the sloppy seconds of That Guy With The Glasses. It was originally a website called The Geek Fighters that was already pretty That Guy With The Glasses-like, before transitioning into a complete one-for-one -one knockoff. Anyone who wanted to join Doug's site and got rejected, they usually ended up here. This is, in every sense of the word, Diet Coke That Guy With The Glasses. And while most of that site was held up mostly by the nostalgia critic and other talented reviewers, there was no reason to ever come to Reviewtopia over anywhere else. There was no Doug to hold the site together. It was usually just seen as a dumping ground for the content creators, just another place to put their videos. You weren't gonna see Spoonie punching a woman in the face for an anniversary special here. True! Roots, Smoots, we are here to rumble! Instead of a 30-year-old man, the site's mascot was a robot named Lar. Little adorable reviewing robot. Oh, ain't he cute. I can't wait to buy overpriced merchandise of him. Some of the people on this site even used both That Guy With The Glasses and Reviewtopia. Yeah, they would post content on both sites. I didn't even know adultery was allowed on that guy. So I'm not really going to mock or take jabs at any of the people on this site because really, it's not their fault because it was pretty much all they could use. Anywhere to get their stuff out there and available in different places. But when looking through the archives of the site, because to no one's shock it no longer exists, I was so shocked to see people who would go on to have amazing careers posting stuff on this website. Imagine my shock when I scrolled my mouse over to archives and there was some commie Johnny sitting in here. He posted to this website all these years ago? I bet if someone asked him about this website today, he would have no fucking clue what they're talking about. But that's not all. Going over to the gaming section, right there at the bottom, is MatPat and Game Theory. Yeah, this was baby MatPat when nobody knew who the hell he was. 
Can you imagine if this site was still around today? But that's still not all. I even found an interview with one of the site's co-founders, and they revealed JonTron and Peanut Butter Gamer auditioned for the site, but they skipped over them in favor of others. When did we lose JonTron? Oh, uh, we never got him! Oh, we I thought we had him in the first place! No, we had him, we- this was- him and Peanut Butter Gamer are two people that we actually passed over, which oh, was stupid as fuck! Fuck! Oh, I was just about to ask about Peanut Butter. <laughs> oh, man. Some of those others being Retro Gamer 3 and his ever so popular review series. Yeah, he was on, uh, he wasn't on the site for long. This website was like a nexus point for big future YouTubers and others whose careers dried up and died or never went anywhere. The flag is a f I actually recommend watching the interview with one of the co-founders. I'll link it in the description. It's an hour and a half long, but if you really care about this dead website from 10 years ago that much, it's an interesting watch. Basically, the story boils down to, guy like what that guy with the glasses was doing, wanted to do it himself, makes the website, and ambition and passion slowly goes down the toilet as they start getting into drama with creators and other problems. But that is not what the nail in the coffin was for Reef Utopia. If you look anywhere on the web, or more specifically, the TB Tropes page, you notice the number of former members far exceeds the number of active members. And considering this page is out of date, now it has no members. But why is that? Why did so many people leave? That would be because one of the biggest members said and showed a lot of shit he shouldn't have. And everyone of worth left. After this, considering there was no reason to ever come back, the whole website was shut down. It was like change the channel before change the channel. Reviewtopia only lasted a few years, and its impact is hardly felt. Reviewtopia tried, it really did, but it didn't matter in the end. Poor Lar was put out of commission. Everyone has forgotten about him and Reviewtopia as a whole. Doug Walker may have fallen in quality over the years, but his older videos and impact are still felt to this day. And while that guy with the glasses may be gone, Doug is still trucking along. That's more than can be said for all the people trying to copy him. All these people had their hearts in the right place, but you can't really match up to the man himself. So all of these clones will just be another part of internet history, and so will Doug. But hey, look on the bright side. At least there are no criminals in this one. God bless, like and subscribe, and good night. I'm Magic Mush. I drag it up from the grave so you can witness it.